Have you ever wondered if you should be using the Libby app versus a, something like Kindle Unlimited or even just paying for different services? Should you be using both? What's the deal? I wanna dive a little bit deeper on the Libby app itself today because I know that there have still been some questions on how do you use it? What are the benefits? First of all, it's free. Lots of people are curious about the benefits of using that over Kindle Unlimited. So today we're gonna deep dive into the Libby app. Some people don't even know what it is. I love Libby, I don't read fast enough to use Kindle Unlimited. So I think it's definitely worth it. Let's go on a deeper dive and talk about the pros and cons of using the Libby app. Thanks for being here. My name is Angie. I am someone who likes to post personal development content Recently, you guys have really been enjoying the Kindle related things. I love reading. I love self-development. I love planning. So thanks for being here and let's dive right into it. So first of all, what the heck is a Libby app? The Libby app is a software system that a lot of libraries have partnered with. If your local library decides they want to give you digital access to different resources, there are things like Overdrive, there's RB Digital, and then there's Libby. Libby is now powered by Overdrive. That's besides the point. There's tons of apps that help kind of funnel that so a local library doesn't have to build a whole app themselves. Instead, they just partner with somebody who has a software who sets it up and you plug in your library code or number, put in your pin and boom, you have access to tons of free titles, magazines, audiobooks, regular books, books that you can shoot over to your Kindle and it's it's amazing. So most libraries have it, and if you have access to multiple libraries, you can use both. <laughs> so you can add multiple libraries. Let's say that you recently moved. You could add your old residency. You could add your mom's library card. You can add as many library cards that you have access to and maintain to the app. If you don't have a library card, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? is free. You are paying good tax money for your library. And now you don't even have to step foot in it. A lot of libraries will let you apply uh, a library card and they'll just send you the pin by email, which is amazing. You don't even have to step foot into the library. What I've experienced is in a few places where I've been, you go and apply, they'll give you an online, you set your pin. And the only reason you might need to step in is if you want to check out a physical book. And at that time, you um, provide proof of address. The rules are different county by county, library by library, and state by state, but it is more and more easy to apply and get digital access to a library card without ever stepping foot in the library. Now, caveat, Libby is not partnering with every library out there, and that's unfortunate, but don't fret because there are places that don't even care if you are from their county or state. I've read and tested that there are a few places that will allow non-residents to have access to a Libby-associated online library card. In other words, if you don't have a library that supports Libby and you still want to get the benefit of this online tool, the app, and all of the free stuff, you can apply as a non-resident to a different library outside of your state, outside of your county. And some places will support this. I've been doing a quick read over on Reddit. There's some mentioning uh, Las Vegas, some mentioning Brooklyn. I know there's one in a Broward County in Florida. So it kind of changes year to year, the policies, but know that there are options for you and we can do a deeper dive on that too. Okay, so that is just an overview of what the Libby app is, how to get access to it, how to set it up. It's available on Google Play. It's available for Apple devices. There you go, just download it, it's free. Just try it, plug it in, and that's how you do it. So there are some pros and cons, and we'll just cover those here now. The first pro, free, is free. <laughs> I love that price. You can access to eBooks, audiobooks, magazines, and a lot of those options have offline download reading and listening. The next one is that it is very easy to use. I love that you can sort, um, you can go through and go as very, specific topics when you're wanting to sort through a huge library. There's also a skip the line function, which is really cool. When I go through the app, your library might support a skip the line where popular titles can be available immediately. They might have an extra set of 
digital downloads for people to use that are very popular on demand. So if you're looking for top titles of that month, you can go to the skip the line. I also like the feature when I'm sorting, which is something that you can't do in a physical library. It's just a different experience. When I pull up the app, I can search for a book. I want to read something supported by Kindle, nonfiction, and I want to read something that is self-help. Let's say those are the the filters that I'm going to search by. Alternatively, I can say that I want to listen to an audiobook, so I can sort only audiobooks, and I want to listen to it now, so I'll say available now, and then I can search, and it's defaulted by popularity instead of alpha order, A to Z, Z to A. So I like that it's sorted by popularity. As you're scrolling in the app, you're immediately hit with the, the most popular titles. All right, next pro for the Libby app is that it really helps you support syncing across devices. If you were reading, you don't have to associate your Kindle app with Libby to, for it to work. You can read straight from the Libby app and it's a pretty good reading experience for mobile. That will save your progress if you were going to be reading from a different device. Now, this is not my preferred way to use Libby. I would much rather read it through Kindle, read on the Kindle app so that can stay synchronized with my Paperwhite. But either way, you get syncing benefits. Just be careful not to be reading and making progress in the Libby and then switch to your Paperwhite because then that's when it becomes out of sync. It's very intuitive. I always send them to my Kindle. Very easy to connect to your Amazon account. You don't need to have a Kindle Unlimited for that to work. You don't need to have Amazon Prime. All it needs is your email and password for the Amazon account to just sync and send those books over. Similarly with being able to sync, Offline access is also a really great perk. If you were traveling, if you are on a plane, if you are out of the country, my husband and I just came back from a cruise trip and it was very fun, but there was no Wi-Fi and I needed some entertainment. I love to read when we're lounging poolside or on the beach. So I was prepped. I sent everything over to my Kindle. I also got some audiobooks in case I wanted to listen to something or be able to, you know, multitask and set things up in the cabin and stuff like that. Now, audiobooks is a little bit tricky. You do have to open it in the Libby app for it to start the download. When you send things to your Kindle, you need to open it on the Paperwhite and see that there's that check mark for it to be truly available offline access. That's very easy to do. It's not, it's just a click. You send it over, hit, and it'll start the download. Then you can be on airplane mode and test it before you leave, and it it works so easily, so fine, very seamless. The next pro of the Libby app is that there are no late fees. I do experience some late fees when I forget or just ran out of time. I think the National Public Library is very generous with automatic renewals. For instance, if I had a book checked out and it was the default 21 days and I let that time lapse, well, it will automatically renew that a few times for me and I don't incur any late fees unless it's a really, really late amount of time. Not all libraries are treated the same, so if your library is a little bit of a stickler for that, this is nice because it will automatically return that copy at the end of your lending period. And this is where that trick with reading offline in the Kindle app can help because if you need more than 21 days, it's a little bit harder to renew, especially for popular titles that have a queue, but I can download it for offline and keep it until I'm done reading the book. There are still no late fees because that digital copy has been returned and become available for someone else to enjoy. The last thing I'll close with in terms of the pros of using the Libby app is that it has so many things. I found that when I'm looking through, surprised by being able to access through my public library. Magazines were really surprising. Just being able to access so many titles. One thing I like to go is to the skip the line just to see what other people are reading, what people are interested in. And I love all of the variety. And they have this kind of a theme where you can say, oh, everybody's reading this one title. We're not going to do any lines. We're going to let everybody read this one title and get focused on that. And I think that's a really cool way to build community around it. I don't know if other libraries are doing that with Libby, but it seems like a feature most would want to participate in. Okay, with all that said, there are some cons, some limitations of using the Libby app. 
Let's go into them. Let's go so you can make an informed decision. Number one, not all libraries have access to Libby. I talked about that in depth in the beginning. You can find workarounds. There's lots of libraries that you can apply for a card as a non-resident and still get access. If you have family members who aren't really even going to be considering using Libby for e-reading, you get asked to use theirs and just punch it in and no harm, no foul because they will never incur any late fees. The next one is the limited lending periods. If I download five books and I completely download them on my Kindle, then it's going to freeze the time in the lending as long as I'm in airplane mode. Now, if I'm ready to switch things out and there are still two books that I haven't read, but I want to get something else, I'm going to have to get back on Wi-Fi and then all of the books get sent back. So that is a frustrating thing if you get really eager and have all these great juicy titles in your uh, downloads, but you're eager to get another one, you kind of get a little, you have to pick and choose, but it's free. All right, I'm gonna keep saying that. For every, for every con, there is a caveat that it's free. The next one is the wait times. For really popular ones, you do have to wait. I found that with one of the book clubs that I was on, most people would just, as soon as the title for the book was announced, we'd all jump onto Libby just to see if it was available. And usually we would pick titles that were so popular that nobody really could claim that book quickly enough. So yeah, really popular ones will have long, long times. And if you're just eager to read that book, then you're gonna um, have to shell out some extra money, buy it digital, buy it physical. That can be frustrating, especially if you're part of a book club. Okay, next, next is that you don't own it. This is, eh, yeah, no, I don't mind. I'm not a person that rereads books, but if I really wanted to share a title, it's still digital, right? Like, it's not like I have a physical book to say, hey, I think you would like this. This is for you. You can read it. If I really love a book, I'm not going to buy the physical title myself. I just love the idea of it's digital, it's streamlined. That's just me. But it could be a big deal for you if you're someone who loves to have your own little lending library and to share and re-gift books and to kind of give that back to your friends. That is a limitation. Okay, and then finally, one of the things is that I've noticed that there is some limited support for magazines and audiobooks. With audiobooks, you can't send them to your Kindle. So the hack with the airplane mode, that's not going to work. It doesn't sync to Audible or any other devices. You can't do an offline download through those other devices. But what I have done is as soon as I open up an audiobook in the Libby app, and I initiate the play, which almost makes it like ready to be downloaded or like offline mode ready, turn on airplane mode and then it will work. And you have your copy until it needs to be returned. Similarly, there's limited support and compatibility with magazines. So I can't send a magazine to a Kindle. It needs to be within the Libby app, which is okay because you can I did download it on Kindle Fire. It just wasn't great. Like I would have rather kept it all in the Kindle family. But when it comes to audiobooks and magazines, you need to read them and listen to those things in the Libby app. So that's a little bit of frustrating. If you're a big audiobook person, maybe that's not for you. Maybe you would prefer an Audible account or Spotify. People have been really excited about Spotify having books. So those are the caveats. Those are the things that you need to consider before you go down the rabbit hole of Libby. But like I said, for every con, I go back to the fact that it's free, it's easy, there are no fees, like, oh my god, I, I'm just fangirling here, and for what? I don't know. Maybe, sh should I go work for Libby? I'm not sure. Thank you guys so much for hopping on and joining. I would love to do a comparison of Kindle Unlimited and Libby. I think that's the next conversation people are wanting to see. If you use Libby religiously, is it worth having a Kindle Unlimited account? I think what it boils down to is whether or not you're willing to wait to read the title. I have a full-time job. I have hobbies. I have a two-year-old toddler taking a lot of my time and energy. So reading is something that I enjoy. It's not something that I can spend a lot of leisure time to do. So it is okay for me to wait six weeks, eight weeks for a title to be ready for me because I've already got queued up some things that I want to read. I'm not eagerly waiting for a juicy book. 
unless it is for book club. So yeah, just a few things to think about. I really appreciate you guys for being here. Thanks for listening and let me know if you have any questions in the comments. All right, bye.